let's look at the real reason for Earth's seasons. Earth, as a planet, is rotates on its axis. We all know that. But as it turns out, it's tilted 23 and a half degrees so that it actually rotates on its axis at a tilt relative to its orbit around the sun. So when you see a globe, it's actually tilted because the Earth is rotating like this and at the same time orbiting the sun. And if we think about its orbit around the sun as a plane, okay, we can describe this as the plane of the Earth's orbit, then Earth is at a angle, at a 23 and a half degree angle as it orbits around the sun. And that 23 and a half degree angle is relative to its plane of orbit around the sun. We call that the axial tilt. What that means then is that at one time of the year, Earth's, the northern hemisphere, is pointed towards the sun, and at another time of year, the northern hemisphere is pointed away from the sun. And so as Earth orbits around the sun, it's either tilting away from, or the sun is directly overhead, or pointing towards, or pointing away from again as the Earth orbits around the sun. So it's this tilt of the Earth that causes our seasons. And we'll see why that's true with a simple demonstration. You can do this at home. Take a flashlight, just a regular old flashlight, and shine it on a piece of paper. As the Earth, again, remember the Earth is tilted on its axis. We're going to pretend we're in the spring and fall situation here when the sun is directly overhead of the equator. As we move to summertime, the sun actually becomes more, the beam of light becomes more concentrated. And it's kind of hard to see that in this particular demonstration here. But as we move to winter time, as the northern hemisphere points away from the sun, what we see is that beam of light is spread over a greater area. So let's do that again. Here's where the sun is directly overhead. And then as the Earth is orbiting and as its tilt is taking it so that the northern hemisphere is tilted away from, you can see that this beam of light is now spread out, or spread out or more spread on the surface. And it's that beam spreading or that beam concentration that gives us the seasons. Let's take a look at, okay, we'll come back to that in just a minute. If we look at the Earth's orbit and when Earth is pointed towards or pointed away from the Earth, it's simply these things that define our seasons. For example, on March 21st, which is known as the first day of spring or the vernal equinox, the sun is directly overhead the equator. Again, Earth's tilt on its axis orbiting the sun brings the sun to where it's directly overhead the equator. As we move from the vernal equinox to the summer solstice or the first day of summer, we have the sun directly overhead at 23 and a half degrees north. This is the Tropic of Cancer. As you recall from an earlier chapter, 23 and a half degrees north defines the upper limit or the northern hemisphere limit of the tropics. As the, sun as the Earth continues on its journey around the sun in the year, it reaches a place again where the sun is directly overhead. But this is what happened just a few days ago, the autumnal equinox. And the sun is directly overhead the equator, headed towards being overhead in the southern hemisphere. So the first day of winter, or the winter solstice, the sun is directly overhead the Tropic of Capricorn, 23 and a half degrees south. So these two lines that we've defined as the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn 
really describe the region within which the sun is going to be overhead at some part of the year. The sun never gets overhead in the north of 23 and a half degrees north and it never gets overhead north of 23 and a half degrees south. The sun is always staying within this tropical region which is why the tropics heat up and why the tropics are known as the place where it's always warm. These four dates the equinoxes when the sun is directly overhead the equator and the solstices which define whether the sun is over the Tropic of Capricorn or the Tropic of Cancer, these four dates mark the beginning of each season. And you should be familiar with these dates. They're not very difficult to remember. The vernal equinox, the spring equi northern hemisphere spring equinox. Remember, in the southern hemisphere, our first day of spring is their first day of fall. The summer solstice, the first day of summer in the northern hemisphere, the autumnal equinox, the first day of fall in the northern hemisphere, and the winter solstice, the first day of winter in the northern hemisphere. And just in case you weren't convinced with that demonstration of the flashlight and the piece of paper and the spreading beam, and which we're going to get back to in just a second, check out these facts. As it turns out, in this current cycle, and this is a this motion of the Earth around the Sun does change. As we learned in Chapter 5 with the Milankovitch cycle, some of the aspects of Earth's orbit around the Sun vary. But in the cycle that we're in right now, the Earth is actually farthest from the Sun in early July. And it's closest to the Sun in early January. If distance was the reasons for the seasons, Earth would not be closer to the Sun in winter. But in fact, it's 147 million kilometers from the Sun in January and 152 kilometers from the Sun in July. It's actually 5 kilometers, 5 million kilometers further away in the summer. So as you can see, that Earth-Sun distance has very little influence over our seasons and the seasons are primarily a result of Earth's tilt on its axis. And here's the dates that I said you should be familiar with. 